host, Robin Agnew, owner of Aunt Agatha's Bookshop, when we were on the street for 26 years and we're now virtual, which is way, way easier. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm thrilled to introduce our best-selling authors, Karen Dion, Hank Felipe Ryan, Tori Eldridge, and Wendy Walker. Um, soon we'll go into our breakout sessions and where you'll be able to ask the authors anything you want. But first, we're going to take a few minutes to get to know them. Okay, Karen, what's one thing about writing and publishing you had to learn the hard way? Oh, boy. Oh. Um, I guess, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got the answer for this. How long everything takes and how much waiting you have to do. You know, publishing is one of those businesses where it's hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. You know, you got to do this fast and get it turned in and then you wait, 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 wait. So, um, yeah, I, I had no idea that that's how it was going to be until I became a published yeah. author. <laughs> Karen, okay. I have this rock on my desk that says patience. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Wendy, what are three things you can't live without? Coffee, wine, <laughs> and my children. Nice. Not in that order. Not in Not that order. Depends <laughs> <laughs> on watching. Depends on the day, right? <laughs> depends on the time of the day. My children, and then and coffee and wine depends on the time of the day. If you took any of those away, I would be sad and grumpy. <laughs> um, Tori, what's something from your childhood you still treasure? Ooh, still treasure. Gosh, you mean the actual physical thing? Okay, um, my father who passed away gave me a little gold medallion, a uh, Chinese medallion. It was to replace Aww. one that was gifted to me uh, from Hong Kong that had a dragon on it and I lost it. And Aww. so he replaced it with this lovely thing and it had the caricature for love. And I still Aww. have that. Oh, that's so sweet. That's really that's sweet. about making you cry. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is excellent for Hank. What is something you can't do? <laughs> is there anything? <laughs> oh, that's I am bar none, the world's worst singer. The, wor the worst. <laughs> I know all the words, all the words. I cannot sing if you, oh no, really? Is it Jonathan, are you a bad singer too? Um, it is tragic. It is genetic. If my family, if my family sings happy birthday together, you wouldn't know what song it was. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a singing teacher and I had some tone deaf students and oh my gosh. Well, it's interesting because I'm not tone deaf. I can completely hear that how wrong I am. Oh, <laughs> I can <laughs> you just can't fix it. <laughs> when everybody else is wrong, but I just can't fix it. So do you think you could fix that, Tori? Is there a way? I, that... I might. I might be able to. You, you and me, another okay, time. We'll get well, together. Zoom. We'll have a Zoom voice lesson. I, don't tell me it'd be great oh this is a good one too karen have you ever cut your own hair yes <laughs> i did one time like recently this haircut <laughs> <laughs> but yeah in the early days of the pandemic you know and as the hair gets longer and longer and it's in my eyes but I only cut the part that you could see you know in a zoom call and I just <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looks very nice right now. Um, Hank, do you consider yourself a good liar? Yes. <laughs> Frozen. <laughs> no. Look at the title I mean, of your book. I, I guess I have to say no. I mean, it's interesting because as a reporter, seriously, I've been a reporter for so many years. And as a reporter, I've gone undercover and in disguise. And mm -hmm. I am lying when I do. That's part of the part of the basis of the first to lie. So it is a perfect question for me. Did right. Set that up. No, no that just that. happened. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So I am actually um, professionally a pretty good liar. Personally, probably not so good. Wendy, what makes you nervous? Um, pretty much everything. Um, <laughs> I, I'm a very anxious person, but nervous. Um, I, I think pretty much everything that goes on in my writing career, career other than the actual writing, everything like Getting up That's to the launch of day, yeah. you know, sales numbers, promoting. Um, there's so many unknowns, uh, you know, and even sending it off to my editor or my agent. Once it leaves my hands, it, I start getting nervous about everything that's going to happen next. Um, but when I'm actually writing it and b believing in it, then I'm not. Tori, what's your guilty pleasure? Uh, ooh, guilty, ooh. guilty pleasure. Ooh. Um, 
Karen wrote I like binge questions. watching television. You know, uh, you, we have a whole entertainment family because I used to be an actress, singer, dancer. My husband's a television okay. film producer. My youngest son is a TV film editor. Y you know, so we come by it honestly, right? So we consume a lot of content. And, uh, you know, sometimes I feel kind of, you know, here I am, this writer. It's like, you know, so I'm always reading lots and lots so it can keep up <laughs> with how much I'm binging. Well, thank you, authors. You guys are such good sport. Um, I have one last question for each one of you, and our authors are prepared. What book have you read recently you think everyone should be reading? Who first, Robin? Um, uh, Hank. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> I recommend And Now She's Gone by Rachel Housel Hall, um, which is such a wonderful PI story about a woman who disappears and the public, um, the private investigator, private investigator who is hired to find her and how she decides whether it would be better maybe to let the woman just stay gone. Um, Rachel Housel Hall is brilliant. It's propulsive, it's immersive, it's a page turner, it's a standalone, um, and it's available now at your favorite bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Karen. Um, my recommendation is The Girl in the Mirror. I don't know how well everybody can read the title there. It's by Rose Carlyle. Pull it back a little bit. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, The Girl in the Mirror, uh, I was sent an early copy to read and offer an endorsement. And I was so excited when I read this book because it just completely took me out of my world. And I loved every word. It takes place mostly, mostly on a sailboat off the coast of Thailand. And Rose Carlyle herself is a sailor. And so, you know, it's very authentic and very, very beautifully written. It's a twin story. So two sisters go out on this sailboat, one comes back, which twin is it? What happened to the other twin? Um, completely engaging. It publishes October 20. So you might have to wait a little bit for it, but uh, it's <laughs> not too long. Very good. <laughs> Wendy? I, okay, recommend, this is The Bright Lands by John Fram. Can you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Very good. <laughs> so I got an early peek at this um, just because we became friends on Instagram. He's a new author. And um, it was it, it just one of those books that I, when I started reading it, I, it was so engrossed immediately. And even though like the, the ending is sort of metaphysical, which I usually don't, I'm not a supernatural metaphysical reader, um, but it was very symbolic. And, and he just break, he breaks all the rules. He's got a ton of narrators, um, or characters that are, you know, points of view going on, short chapters, long chapters, but it's so engaging and the characters pop off the page. The writing is so good and the themes are so deep and really highly recommend it's available now. Tori, yeah. how about you? Okay, I was listening to uh, the audiobook for Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. I have a feeling that might have looked in reverse. Uh, his book came out in August, and it's a crime fiction novel. And I got to say, it's going to be one of the classic crime fiction novels, and it will most definitely be one of the all time, you know, like top of the list when you're talking about black authors and just um, pivotal books, S.A. Cosby's Blacktop Wasteland is going to be on that list. Fantastic. Wasn't that fun? We hope that you enjoyed this taste of what happens at a backroom event. The best part comes immediately after when the audience is divided into breakout rooms and the authors visit each room in turn. We'd love to show you what a breakout session looks like because these relaxed face-to-face -face conversations between readers and best-selling authors are the hallmark of our backroom events. But breakout sessions are never recorded. What's said in the backroom stays in the backroom. Mm -hmm.